yeah good morning guys so uh yesterday while i was i was discussing about the isi 2020 psc problem i made a wrong statement in some sense uh where i told that emily if it's unbiased can be i mean i rather is unvue okay this is wrong and this was pointed out by my student uh, our student devargo so i really want to point and uh, focus on it uh today uh so this is a series of ideas that i want to share with you so the idea that an mle may not be umve will be coming later on in the series but now today i will be just um, going towards the idea of uh, marching towards the idea of mle and sufficiency together now the question is that hi the question is that why is that question important you have to understand this and we will be discussing this again and again that when we are understanding a, an estimator we know that an estimator cannot be so we cannot really find out the problem of finding out the best an estimator with uh, the minimum msc okay is really impossible it cannot be found out okay it's really hard you can really prove this uh, it's an np hard problem in some sense in computational perspective or also they, they don't know how to do it it's like asking something like what is the i mean you know about various unsolved problems so we are therefore i mean there is a problem called traveling sense of problem in computer science it has a shortest distance uh, algorithm so it's not really possible i mean it's not really possible now it may be possible in the future so it's really a hard problem that's what it means not really possible is a bad word so we are trying to understand whether an estimator is the best estimator or not that is a minimum uh, msc or not so it's not possible so what we do we put on restriction and we try to find out other good properties of estimators okay uh, one of them is uh, sufficiency there are two type of properties one is small sample properties and one is large sample properties and uh, with small sample properties what we look is that uh, what are the good properties with respect to uh, suppose we don't assume that the sample is large okay so the properties include sufficiency the properties include uh completeness the properties include unbiasedness the properties include minimum msc and uh, umvue okay so it attains crlb and this stuff the type of ideas are called small sample properties where we don't assume the idea that the large sample is large now when the sample is really large we can really do some assumptions and really those assumptions are really important and in large sample what we really do you must be reading uh, like i had my large sample in my masters first year so you also must be reading that so in large sample what we have is that we try to uh, like make the sample size n goes to infinity and we try to get some interesting results one of the interesting result is that the theta hat the estimator is actually going converging into some actual theta okay that's what it means when n goes to infinity okay and uh, i mean if you yeah that's what it means and uh, the convergence of this of this random variable is called convergence in probability there are two type of convergence we usually usually look into one is in probability convergence and in distribution convergence so in probability convergence that is called consistency and in distribution convergence we always look forward towards we can easily prove it um we always look forward towards convergence in distribution to a normal distribution that is as, that is called asymptotic normality so these are the two important aspects uh, of large sample we look into that is uh, consistency and uh, asymptotic normality and for small sample we have sufficiency completeness um umvue okay and these are the basic stuff the other other properties also invariance or something like that so i am going to that because those are not really important now so these are the idea okay so what i uh, so ml is an estimate ml is an ml is an algorithm right to find out an estimator a good estimator a very reasonable uh, estimator so what we look forward towards is that we try to understand the relationship between msc and the various good properties of this estimator okay whether we are trying to understand whether ml is a good proper good estimator or not that's why we ask questions like what is the relationship between ms uh, ml and sufficiency what is the relationship between ml and completeness what is the relationship between whether uh, if ml is unbiased or not if ml is a, a best estimator or not if ml is umv or not is ml consistent towards the estimator towards the parameter or not is ml asymptotic normal or not so today we are picking a certain topic called the relationship between ml and sufficiency okay and we will tell 
so i will tell about this uh, person d basu so he was famous in isi he was a professor of isi he was a famous researcher so he actually did many counter examples to this general uh, frequentist idea in statistics and therefore uh, we will see how this often this small small ideas so maybe you know that ml is a function of sufficient statistic but is it always true when is it true so we are going to understand this aspects and that's what makes you different from others if you know about this tiny bits and pieces of each and every aspects you know the corner uh, of each and every this like whole this whole, whole bunch of ideas this room of ideas so that's where you become much more efficient and are much more uh, capable in understanding the whole thing so let's go back to the mle perspective what is really the mle i will just uh, do some brief uh, like review okay uh it's convergence in probability that's that's what is called convergence in probability okay proven so you must be knowing this stuff uh before you i mean that is the prerequisite of this um uh, we'll not discuss those so uh what do you need to know you need to know about the maximum likelihood estimator you need to know about the sufficient you need to know about the exponential family okay to understand what's really going on so let's try to revise what is the uh, maximum likelihood estimator the maximum likelihood estimator is that it's simple so you write the likelihood function you maximize the likelihood function that's what the maximum likelihood estimator is all about okay that's it now try to understand this simple thing we are trying to now understand and connect to the sufficient statistic if we try to understand the sufficient statistic and what a connection between them this is how it works so we are trying to this is the li likelihood function which is actually the density function the, of the sample and what we do what is a standard in the sufficient statistic by sufficient statistic is something if the conditional like the conditional distribution of the data given you doesn't depend on theta that is you contains the whole information both theta okay and you have name and factor in theorem which are name and factor in theorem which tells you that the likelihood whether the density the probability density of the whole sample actually can be written into two product of two functions one is a function of the sample sorry the sufficient statistic and the parameter and there is a function of just the sample okay so that's why you can write it that's how you can write it that's what factorization theorem tells you now what is the relationship between maximum likelihood estimator and sufficient that comes up next mm -hmm. so what is the relationship the how we find a relationship essentially you must understand this likelihood is actually the f of theta of x this likelihood is actually the f of theta of x which you can write it as by name in factorization theorem <clears throat> that is a function of this sufficient statistic u comma theta into some r of x now try to understand we are trying to maximize with respect to theta right so if we maximize the likelihood with respect to theta essentially we this r of x is a constant so what we are getting we are actually maximizing this g u of x comma theta with respect to theta and therefore you maximize that what you get after maximizing what you get is actually a function of g of i mean this u of x right that's how we get that's the beauty of it right guys and therefore we tell we prove finally that ml is actually a function of the uh, sufficient statistics i'm so sorry my voice has cracked just give me a minute yeah so we have got that the ml is actually a function of the sufficient statistic that's what you have proved now it's a very simple proof but the question is that is this always true that's what we there's a problem there is a simple problem that we are all overlooking over here so what we have proved till now we have proved that you understood what is the maximum likelihood estimator we have understood what is sufficient estimator and we have proved that there's some there exists some relationship between the maximum likelihood estimator and sufficient what is that that ml is most probably a function of the sufficient statistic but there are some aspects to it that we have ignored and we will see by by an example a maximum likelihood estimator cannot be a, may not be unique that's the basic idea okay maximum likelihood estimator cannot be may not be unique and that's where the problem lies where we understand and we try to find a maximum likelihood estimator which is not a function of sufficient statistic okay we try to find a maximum likelihood estimator that is not a function of sufficient statistic and i will show you the actual result the actual result is that that if p is a sufficient statistic then exists the mle which is a function of t that by the proof we have done simple proof but what if happens if the mle is not unique 
and can you give an example when you uh, when the ml is not unique guys it's really easy ml is not unique can you give an example it's a really easy example and that example is actually what is comes from a non exponential family distribution that is the uniform distribution an ml cannot be may not be unique and that's what comes from the uniform distribution and if uniform distribution comes up let's see this example so x1 x2 xn are id uniform theta comma theta plus 1 distribution and let's sort of understand this uh, how the ml of this theta looks like in this aspect and if you write out the likelihood it will be indicator all the xi library theta and theta plus 1 and therefore the minimum is greater than equal to theta and maximum is less than equal to theta plus 1 so understand that this whole likelihood is dependent upon that g which is a function of this x1 the the first order statistics and last order statistics and therefore that is a sufficient function sufficient statistics for theta okay now the question is that let's find out the mle if you try to function maximize mle you understand this tells you that the mle must be something theta had which lies between which satisfies this property and which means that theta must be between the must be less than the first order statistics and greater than the maximum order statistics minus 1 okay and therefore it's uniformly one between x1 and xn minus 1 that's the basic idea fine so now you can take that x1 plus xn minus 1 by 2 you can take this function it's in fact lying between x1 and xn minus 1 so it's the mle so essentially you can take any 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 point between these two function let's say xn minus 1 turns out to be 1 and x1 turns out to be 1.5 so any any number between this 1 and 1.5 you can get it to be a mle of this whole theta hat so the mle is not unique over here that's the thing mle is not unique over here that's the that's the beautiful aspect of it but let's take this example theta hat what if you take this example theta hat This theta had you take that sine square of x one plus x n minus one plus cos square of x one into x of one. If you take this example, understand that this theta had dash is not dependent upon x one that is the first row statistic and last row statistic together. Because x one that is the x one the first statistic is there, so it's not only dependent upon because sine square x one plus cos square x one is equal to one. That's the idea of it. That's why. what happens it's actually between x1 and xn minus 1 but it is not only dependent upon the first row statistics and last row statistics it's also dependent upon the first sample x1 so it's actually not a function of the sufficient statistic that's the idea so mle is not actually always a function of the sufficient statistic so what have what is exactly what did we prove then so what we did what did we prove over here the actual result is that that if t is sufficient statistic and if there exists an mle which is a function of t for example in this case an mle which is a function of t it will be xn minus 1 actually is this x1 plus xn minus 1 by 2 okay that is a function which is dependent only upon x the first row statistic and last row statistic okay but it doesn't tell that every mle you get it is a function of a sufficient statistic it tells that there exist an mle which is a function of a sufficient statistic you understand and that's the idea so therefore if we know somehow that the mle is unique we can say that mle is a function of the sufficient statistic t okay that's a that's a reasonable idea to be uh, look into to be looking into okay so we have got that mle may not be a function of sufficient statistic but if it's unique it must be a function of sufficient statistic and that's a, a counter example to that initial argument that ml is always a function of sufficient statistic it's no just no but you can prove that in a exponential family in kara parameter exponential family you can prove that the ml is actually unique and that's a homework for you and let's see some questions that you can dwell upon in your free time and you can understand so as i told you that you can do a lot of research work and you understand yourself and found find counter examples online or you maybe try to find out themselves that you as i have told you the large sample properties and small sample properties you try to find out that what mle really like what are the properties of mle you can prove that mle is a consistent estimate 
that is conversion the problem theta. You can prove that MLE is an asymptotic non-unity. So large sample property is really good for MLE, but small sample properties are they really good. Huh. In fact, MLE is a very good small sample properties in k parameter exponential family. The usual distributions we like handle. Okay. So what we do is that you can ask the following questions: How it is MLE is understand MLE is only connected to sufficient statistics, and you can ask questions like. How is MLE consistent? How is MLE asymptotic? Normal. You can ask also, which will come to this next. But well, I was wrong actually. How is MLE connected to UMVUE? MLE unbiased MLE is not always UMVUE. The Bargo has pointed it out, and I will explain you that idea in the next series of videos soon. But you can understand, you can understand, and you can research about these properties together. I will enhance you, and you will get to know a lot of unders, like a lot of distributions, new distributions. Okay. For example, you can ask this question: That when can is MLE always sufficient statistic? That's you can ask it yourself. Is MLE always a sufficient statistic? Unique MLE. Let's say unique MLE. Let is unique MLE always a sufficient statistic? You can ask this question. Okay. You can ask a lot of other questions together, and that's where your uh, enhancement of an idea of the whole. uh estimation theory will be very concrete and that's what i want you to do as a teacher okay so future of videos on this ideas in interrelationships between this uh, common properties of the estimator are coming up so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like this video and don't forget to share it with your friends okay and see you in the next video soon stay tuned and stay blessed and a very good morning to you bye bye